Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I know it's been a while since I've done a weekly wrap up, so thank you for hanging in there. It's been just a whirlwind of a couple weeks, so I definitely want to take the time today to kind of update you on some things. Um, but first, I definitely just have to, my deepest, deepest thank you to all of you um, who cared so much about Zeke like we did. It was tough loss, they all are. Um, everybody we know that supports us or is in the rescue business knows that saying goodbye is the hardest thing um, we do. And I'm just grateful for the vet teams that came together and the caretakers that noticed these slight changes. And even though we didn't know what it was at first, um, that didn't mean we didn't take it seriously. They did an observation every day, the vet some every day. Um, they were talking to ophthalmologists from the beginning. And so as you know, Zeke the Tiger, uh, we said goodbye to. And um, you know, this was on top of his symptoms he's had since he's arrived and the symptoms, the GI issues, um, the acute liver issues last year. Uh, there's no way to confirm at this point if everything's related um, or not, but uh, we do know with his body attacking his own cells this time, including his eyes, that it, it could be a cancer or it could be um, a really, really aggressive autoimmune disorder that couldn't be treated with steroids or other treatments. So we had to make the most kind decision, um, but it was a hard one. It was a hard one. And what we're so thankful for is even though when I did my live post and we kind of saw him down and out, uh, the last 24 hours before his um, having to say goodbye, he was chuffing and, you know, mentation was back. Uh, but we know that was probably his last hurrah and we wanted him to go out um, on a good note. Not We didn't want him to deteriorate and have more seizures or um, have more issues than we had because those eyes had to be very uncomfortable, especially one that was that had ruptured um, just the night before the ophthalmologist was here. So thank you guys for your condolences. But it has been a busy, busy cat week, not only um, veterinary wise, but move wise. So let's first do vet uh, stuff. So I was supposed to be working from home today on the next issue of Uproar and then I have a uh, donor event tonight with the board, um, but uh, the staff noticed that baby Jenga's uh, forehead and face were very, very swollen today. Um, and it just didn't seem normal and it wasn't in the position where it was a tooth. So I ended up driving up so that we could sedate and see baby Jenga. Um, and I was there, I was the one that got, that I immobilized him. He went down um, wonderfully and we were hoping we would find an abscess that we could just drain. And with baby Jenga, we ended up finding what's called cellulitis, which means it is each individual cell is inflamed and filled with fluid, so you can't drain the pressure. Um, think of if you have a wasp bite or a bug bite, that can be cellulitis if you get really big um, inflammation. We don't know if that's what caused it. Um, but we couldn't find anything we could drain. Uh, we did check his, uh, you know, he's got severe arthritis and that fluid leakage in the joints and we couldn't get a lot of fluid out. In the past, we've gotten 10 to 20 mils of fluid out and be able to leave the pressure, but that was cellulitis in his arm too. And the bad arm is just getting worse. Um, not a lot of range of motion, things like that. Uh, luckily, he's on a lot of pain medication to help with that. And then we ran his blood work and did full exam, and he does have renal disease, which is not surprising for a 19-year-old, but when we did the stem cell therapy, we actually uh, got his kidneys back to normal levels, but that was you know, only for six months to a year. So he was pretty dehydrated too. So the good news is, as stressful as it was, we're, we're waking, we woke him up. Um, and we're hoping all the meds that we gave from Benadryl to he got Silencia for arthritis, he got Serenia for inflammation, um, you know, he got Mirtazapine to help stimulate appetite because he does not like to eat after he's been sedated um, and we want him to still get pain meds on board. So we are don't know exactly what happened, um, but we're hoping this will help him. Uh, I think that just the reality for me is that he is He's aging, 
And so, um, uh, we're not gonna say goodbye. It's not there yet, but it just shows me that we're getting closer and closer. So uh, I was glad that I was able to come on site and be there with him today and trim his nails and brush his fur while he was sedated. So I uh, look forward to hopefully seeing him. But I have discussed uh, with the caretakers that even though he's got that wonderful, beautiful habitat and he loves beauty, we probably need to start thinking in the next few months to bring him up to quarantine our smaller enclosure in a bigger indoor room um, just for his mobility. So I'll keep you updated on baby Jenga as well. Um, as you know, we moved Ramsey and Brianna over to Small Cat Track. Both of them were sedated for that and you guys got to see the live posts of their teeth extractions. Um, I don't know why we're having old cats with bad teeth, but most likely it's because most of them are boneless because they've had teeth removed over the years. And just like if you have a cat just on soft food, they don't have anything to wear and the tartar down and things like that. But both of them have been doing great over in small cat track and are back to them normal selves. Um, Serval Phoenix was under the weather a little bit too. And so we uh, sedated him and he had a really bad tooth as well a, a molar so that he was that was removed he's back was back the same day out with his family nunda is thinking he kind of smells a little weird and doesn't know what to think yet but i know um in just a, a day or so they'll be back to their normal selves uh we also have been watching taras uh the ukraine lion cub he has had a, a limp for about two weeks now he wants to put pressure on it, and as soon as we keep him quiet, it goes away a little bit. We've given him some pain meds and anti-inflammatories, and that helps. Um, and then as soon as we give him anything to do, he loves to run, jump, play on it. But it appears to be soft tissue. Both of the vets have looked at him. Uh, they don't think they want to sedate him for x-rays or anything at this point. It's like a groin boy that keeps... Uh, keeps a kind of putting pressure on a joint. Um, we also can be growing pains. He's grown so fast in such a short time, but nothing too concerning at this point. And do remember that we have him scheduled for his vasectomy um, at the end of August when Dr. Kushner will come back for that procedure as well. So those are kind of our health updates. Um, the normals, uh, Ty, uh, the Chaucey slash jungle cat, he has been um, on his nine, I would say 14 year lives over the last several um, years. And then giving him Silencia really helped with his severe, severe spine, spondylosis. Um, and then we can just see that he's slowing down a lot. Uh, the summer months can be hard. If the heat's uh, been here, now it's been nice and cool. So we're keeping an eye on him, but um, some of our geriatrics we know you know, eventually it'll be their time. We just hope it's not today. And our goal is to give them the best days possible. The other thing that started this week is our psychological well-being um, new procedures, which we've talked about a little bit. So we used to have a caretaker uh, be in zone one, another group in zone two, zone three, and they would do the cleaning, the feeding, the enrichment. Well, we've changed it to we have teams. We have a feeding team on a certain day we have a cleaning team on a certain day and we have an enrichment team and that means that yes if you do live posts you might see some of the grasses a little longer you might see in the rooms or that that there might be um you know a little bit of disheveled straw around we might have a few piles of poop in a corner but we don't want to spend our time like the old days making sure it's a sterile environment for cats when they don't want a sterile environment. Um, that causes actually their cortisol levels to increase. So the psychological well-being um, right now is really about keeping them uh, stimulated. And when I walked around yesterday, the amount of enrichment that was handed out, the amount of cool things that the cats were doing, uh, just super warmed my heart. So I know whenever you change anything, it can cause a lot of stress uh, for the caretakers and they are going with the flow. And even though it was really hard to get used to the change, uh, they all said they want to stick with it um, and see how they can make this new process work. And so super excited about that. Today they're doing um, switching toys from one enclosure to another so that cats can smell other cats. Um, and then um, I might have to step out to why Dr. Uh, Camp, uh, Campbell, Campbell comes in and uses my office. So I'll look at that. Um, we've had volunteers here. Uh, mowing team has been 
busy. They've been busy mowing everything. Um, we've also had new interns start today, animal care interns, so we're really excited to have them. As you guys know, Olivia is here formally, and that's been wonderful. And Olivia and Judson and the media interns have been busy. They are working on the 2024 calendar. Um, and so those will be available soon. But look at who's the cover, Dash. So I just got the sample. Um, we're going to proof that. And then uh, by August, those will be available for you to purchase. So next year's calendars. Also, Judson finished uh, Bonsai's Wild at Heart video. So that's going to be going out to sponsors as well as uh, being shared on social media. And then our Cats in Crisis campaign is ending on July 15th. That is two days away. So if you haven't give and want to help us get that match, help us towards... Um, you know, the rest of the equipment, there's still things on the list. There's uh, things we need to do. Our electric, uh, we talked about that a while ago, that had been an issue as a $50,000 project. Luckily, with some work and some creativity, we've gotten it down to $25,000, but that wasn't part of Cats in Crisis originally. And so if you have another 25 to give or 50 to give or want to share though our posts, um, we have two days left of Cats in Crisis where your donations will be matched up to another $30,000. And that's really also to try and get us towards the van. So we are... Um, Oh, thank you, Hendo. Uh, people are talking about the Poznan Zoo. <laughs> um, we are really excited to get the, the new rescue van too. And so we aren't at that goal yet. We're hoping to get to that goal. We've also reached out to some foundations to see if they can help financially. Um, vans are very, very expensive right now. Um, those are kind of my big updates. Um, we also... Uh, I have a event tonight I'm going to with a, a few of our board members trying to um, kind of bring the sanctuary to some people in the Twin Cities and uh, hopefully some donations for the cats. And then also we have a U our U.S. Senator coming through this weekend um, and we're really excited to uh, introduce her to the Wildcat Sanctuary, talk about our important work, talk about what the next steps are for the Big Cat Public Safety Act and how uh, the Wildcat Sanctuary, with your support, is a leader in um, helping those animals. Uh, we know we've already uh, talked to agencies in U.S. Fish and Wildlife and definitely are being called uh, on as a sanctuary to help in the future when um, seizures or surrenders occur because of the Big Cat, Big Cat Public Safety Act. And we really expect that to happen soon. We also have a couple more cases in the works um, that could be upwards over 10 cats we know, so uh, we'll keep you posted if anything happens there. And then with the Argentina Tigers, um, we are still, um, sorry, lost internet for a little bit, but the Argentina Tigers, still in progress. I wish we had more news, but um, international rescues are complicated and very uh, long term. So we will keep you guys all updated. And again, much love to all of you. Um, we really truly felt it when we're having a hard time here uh, with our recent loss. So thank you so much for being a part of what we do. And I hope to bring you more weekly wrap ups in the future.